Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a time lapse of this peach painting, and you can find the real time version of this tutorial in Critique Club over at lindsaywyrick.teachable.com if you want to follow along step by step in real time. And we're going to start off by working on a piece of gessoed mat board. So I just went ahead and gessoed, oh, probably about 50 mat boards scraps at once, and then I have them ready for whenever I want to draw. This is a game changer when it comes to working with colored pencils or pencils pastels or um, really any sort of dry media, even like water soluble crayons, the gessoed mat board is just really wonderful. And you want to make sure to get clear gesso so that way the color of your paper or mat board scraps will show through and it also has a sandy grit to it which is really handy. Now I just showed you the way I've been storing my Derwent Light Fast pencils. And I put them in that case along with my pro colors and my drawing pencils because I thought it would make me use them more. But it turns out it's really difficult for me to see what color I have because they only have the little uh, flash of color on the ends and I'm looking at the leads, which I always go by the leads anyway, but but when I have uh, pencils with a whole barrel is colored, I found that um, that's why that works so well in my other pencil racks. Um, so I went back to putting these in the trays after I did this painting because I'm like, yeah, I'm just, it's taking me so long to identify the pencils. When I have the colored barrel pencils in that pencil rack that kind of sits behind me in my videos, it's kind of decoration, um, I can see the kind of general pencil color and then I can look at the tips for a more precise um, identification. I find that having the natural barrels there, it just works better if they're in trays. So I want to let you know and update you on how that little experiment was working out for me since I showed you the um, the uh, case there and I showed it in a sat chat as well. As you can see, I'm just blocking in my color. I like to start with dark and then do the light and then do the midtones. I find that, that just helps it um, helps me more easily assign my colors and my values and getting the darks in first keeps it so my colors don't get too muddy. And uh, I do that with pastel and oil paints as well because I find those opaque mediums tend to be, um, or, or mediums where you are going to be adding like opaque colors to, like your whites and yellows and lighter values, those opaque colors just gobble up whatever else you have. So getting the darkest value in first I find to be very helpful. And then um, I'm just kind of going in and using different shades of yellow to bring out the colors that I see in the peach. The peach had a little bit of a funny little um, kind of pattern on the side. I don't know if you call it pattern, but just kind of, um, oh, you know, coloring that I wanted to also put that in. It looks kind of like the Starfleet Enterprise. <laughs> noise there on the side. So I thought that was kind of cute. And I like to find, especially in really simple, um, really simple still lifes, I try to find like unique things and kind of capitalize on those, kind of exploit those unique little variances to make the painting a little more interesting. I also like to um, uh, sometimes increase the contrast, like maybe make a shadow a little bit more dark uh, or maybe even add some color into the shadow. But um, yeah, it's just kind of a, a way to make the uh, the ordinary seem a little extraordinary. So, or, or as I like to put it, help the muggles see the beauty in everyday life. Because as artists, we kind of take for granted that we see the beauty in everyday life. Now, one thing I'll say about the Derwent Light Fast pencils, I do find their range of grays to be a little limited. Um, if you do like to have a variety of grays, obviously you can layer up and mix. Um, one of the blacks into the grays and get more tonal variation there. But um, I actually ended up grabbing a few gray Prismacolor Premier pencils to add in there because their grays are done in a, like a gradient scale, like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on percent. And I find that a really a much easier way to deal with grays. I like it when markers do that too, because it's so much easier to see like cool gray, 70% rather than, you know, um, steel gray or platinum or kind of an arbitrary name. It's nice when you have like the base Base tone or the base undertone and then you've got the saturation or the value um, I find anyway so I wish I wish I was more of a common practice it's uh, it's not though sadly I'm using a makeup applicator here to blend my colors I got a pack of a hundred on Amazon dual-ended um, makeup sponges for like seven dollars like oh, probably about six months ago or so those are great you can keep reusing them they remind me a lot of the pan pastel soft tools and they work great they're just they don't pick up a lot of material they just kind of spread it around and um and they're just wonderful you can also find makeup applicators at any department store i found a set once and they're actually still going strong they're in my pastel drawers though from christmas tree shop that had color-coded handles which is really great because i will use the same applicator over and over and over again for that same color family so that would be another tip for an inexpensive blending tool and then I just the nice thing about the sponge applicators especially nowadays they're so much better than they used to be um 
they're almost that like uh um just dense soft material that doesn't absorb or shred when you use it on a surface like this it's just really nice and um so affordable so i highly recommend that i'll try to remember to link the set that i bought on amazon in case you want a big patch a uh, big box of them uh because they are handy but i do recommend use them over and over and over again because you know i haven't i haven't worn any out and like i've used like there's one that i used for like the plum painting um, that I did for Michaels and I did that painting several times. I kept reusing the sponge. It had no shredding at all. So, uh, so definitely a good idea and a nice uh, product that will last over and over again. And if you have friends that do art, you could split it with, uh, with friends cause there's a lot in there or like I use some in my cosmetics bag. So I put like some in my makeup kit and I brought the rest down to the art studio. <laughs> it works, it works well on all, on all fronts, friends. I want to let you know that this painting took about, uh, I would say 55 minutes, I think, is what it was when I put all the footage into my video processing software. So um, it's at, for colored pencils, it was a pretty quick drawing, actually. Uh, I think, and I owe it to the uh, gessoed surface, and I owe it to the pencils. The Derwent Light Fast pencils are a bit harder than... Um, then, uh, I don't know, I wouldn't call them a hard pencil. I would call them probably medium on the whole scale of, of like pencil hardness. They're much harder than like the, Der the Derwent Chroma Flow. I think the Chroma Flow would even go faster or any other really soft pencil would go a lot faster for this because you'd lay down so much more at once. But, um, and this would obviously take a little bit longer if you're working on an unsanded paper or a regular paper. The, I think these would also be nice with the, this paper would be nice with the pro colors because they really need that sanded surface to, um, to be at their best, I believe. And uh, when I'm blending, I'm trying not to wipe off the material. I'm just kind of tapping and wiggling a little bit. So I'm kind of like trying to push it into the fibers or into the texture so that, um, so that I keep it. And uh, yeah, you don't want to just wipe off everything you've put on because when you do use a sanded surface or a uh, gessoed surface, the the pencil almost acts like a pastel. It's almost dusty. So it'd be really easy to wipe off your hard work and waste all that material. And I don't want you to do that. The other benefit of a sanded surface or a gessoed surface like I'm using is that um, you can use your pencils down to the nubs. You don't have to keep a very sharp point until you're like doing detail and stuff. So it's not like you're sharpening and sharpening and sharpening and wasting, even though it feels like your pencils wear down really quick, which they do wear down quicker, but you're, that, that quickness that it's wearing down is the time that you're saving on this. And I, I am a lazy artist and I love to work quickly. I love to get those ideas out before I get bored with them. So this works out really good for me. Uh, if a painting takes too long, I might get bored with it before I finish it up. It becomes tedious. I don't like tedious things. I like to always be moving, always be going I'm like a shark, baby. I am a shark, the shark of art. <laughs> I don't know about that. But um, but regardless, I like to work fast and this uh, this works well for me. I actually gessoed up tons of boards. I gave a bunch to my sister, who's also an artist, because I'm like, you got to try this. And I was so excited. I'm like, Bri, you got to try this. It is so cool. Um, I don't know if she has or not. She hasn't like told me. She, she probably hasn't because it's like totally a game changer. I think if she tried it already, she would have totally texted me by now and told me how awesome I am. But uh, I don't know. Sibling rivalry. <laughs> I don't know. Do, do your sisters tell you how awesome you are? <laughs> I think it should be more often. That should happen more often, don't you think? Um, so here I am just layering up some more of these details. Now, when you put the strokes of pencil down, it's really important, especially on these final layers, that you're going with the direction of the the like the shapes of your object. So there's these kind of very faint striations going from like stem to the bottom of the um, of the fruit, kind of like the you know lines on a globe. And you want to make sure you put those pencil marks down there so you'll be building up that realistic texture so you don't have to go back in and fiddle with it. You know, a stitch in time saves nine, friends. You just always color in the direction that you want your strokes to go because even if you're going to blend it out, it's, you know, you're just going to be building up that texture and being a good habit the whole way. So building those habits is really important. But there you have it. It's all done. If you'd like a real-time version of this, if you'd like the lesson in real time, then check out my school over on Teachable. Check out Critique Club. I will have it linked down below. It's $5 a month and you get access to, I don't know, it's probably like 75 tutorials in there by now. Um, and you can share your artwork with me for critique if you wish. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.